Greetings, book nerds of the interwebs. The book reviews have returned. So today's video will be the new release, Either Or by Alif Bodiman, which I was so stoked to get an advanced copy of before it was released. And because uh, I read The Idiot this year and I was like, mm, this is probably going to be a favorite of the year. And then the, the either or comes out. But before I jump into the review, my name is Alana and we review books on this channel. So if that is your cup of tea, mainly book reviews. I don't really dive too much into reading uh, wrap ups or monthly TBR lists just because I, I, if, I do that on Instagram. It's just a little bit easier for me to do that on Instagram with how I the frequency of which I'm actually not able to sit down and, and, and film videos. So I do that over on Instagram. Annotations galore. I always have the same hair poking me in the eye every time I sit down to do this. And I need a trim like today after, you know, I'm gonna go to my mama house. She won't give me a hair trim because I need it because my split ends got split ends. Either Or was published on May 24th of this year. It is the sequel to The Idiot. But if you haven't read The Idiot, I am not spoiling anything in either this book Burke. I'm not spoiling anything in either this book or that book. I will just be talking about the themes and some of the things that I liked in this book and then calling it a day. As always, I, I open with a quote when I am about to dive into a book. Whatever problems I had were of my own making, and that meant I was going to have to solve them myself. So in either or, Elif, Elif, it's Elif, I found out it's pronounced Elif Bottoman, picks up where the idiot leaves off. So the idiot leaves off um, in the summer of 2000, 2000 in 1996. Um, she is uh, wrapping up her summer break. And then after that, you, you, I wouldn't call it a cliffhanger, but you definitely have some some loose ends that are not tied up. And so this picks off where the idiot leaves off. So it is Celine's second year at Harvard University in her undergrad years and it's 1996. Celine is even more confused than she was in The Idiot. She's even more helter-skelter in a lot of ways. And one reason why she's more confused is because in The Idiot, she had this crush on this guy named Ivan, a Hungarian mathematics major, and she spent her summer in Hungary in the previous book. And so she's coming back from that kind of an emotional wreck <laughs> and she I would say she's quite listless and it's it's evident that she's quite unhappy in this book especially after what happened in the previous book she is still in that phase of what am I not getting that everybody else around me tends to get or seems to get and so she is in a way is is on this quest to make it make sense. And so she picks up a book of either or by the existentialist philosopher Kierkegaard. And she decides to use either or, why hence the title of this book, as a template to test living an aesthetic life versus living an ethical life. And in doing so, Selene is definitely on her way to having that full college experience that she actually didn't have in her first year. And in a way, that stereotypical college experience that people expect undergrads to kind of get up to. So the premise of Kierkegaard's Either Or, as I said, sets up the framework for this novel. Selene takes on the principle of living more aesthetically. And in parentheses, I'm looking at my review, my review I said hedonistically, and I'm gonna come back to that in a minute later on in the view or ethically and decides to apply this this theory to her life in an effort to make her life make more sense either then one is to live aesthetically or one is to live ethically which is what she was reading from Kierkegaard's either or my heart was pounding there was a book about this in Bottomman's either or Celine makes a series of choices like this or that and whereas in The Idiot, Celine was on the outskirts of social life in a lot of ways, she's now partaking in everything that is considered to be socially acceptable according to this culture of undergrad life that she's in. So just insert the stereotypes here, sex, 
alcohol and parties. <laughs> and what is interesting about this novel is that it does pose the question, what are the consequences of living aesthetically? And when I mentioned earlier, just a few minutes back that I put in parentheses, aesthetically, parentheses, hedonistically, I was greatly reminded of the book, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Here's a quote from Dorian Gray. An artist should create beautiful things, but should put nothing of his own life into them. We live in an age when men treat art as if it were meant to be a form of autobiography. We have lost the abstract sense of beauty. In Dorian Gray, Dorian's portrait, if you're not familiar with that novel or you haven't read it. So Dorian, the main character, his portrait bears the weight of his depravity, showing what corruption does to the soul. Because Dorian is out here doing whatever he wants to do when he wants to do it and leaves like a wake of destruction in his path, right? And so, he, but he doesn't age, but his portrait ages. And so the portrait is really showing the consequences, the result of his actions. And for Celine, the more that she engages in these more socially acceptable activities, in some ways, she becomes more elusive to herself in doing so. Sometimes it seemed to me that I looked interesting, mysterious, and sculptural. Other times, I thought that I didn't look like anything, that nothing matched together or corresponded to anything or had any kind of grace or proportion or meaning, that the posture was deformed and hateful, like a sign of laziness or obsequiousness or some other personality flaw. At first, I actually thought that I was kind of making up this connection between the picture of Dorian Gray and this book, but... Um, when I finished this book, I flipped to, there's a whole massive list of cited sources here. I, yeah, it's massive. It's like four to five pages long right at the end. And the picture of Dorian Gray, she does list it. So I was like, yes, trust those hunches, people. Like if you have a hunch about something, you're probably right. <laughs> but so I was pretty, pretty pleased that I kind of picked up on that. This idea of living an aesthetic life, and I, I'm looking at my reviews, so all my reviews are typed out before I sit down and do these. Um, the the amount of times that I'm going to say aesthetic in this review, bear with me, but that's 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 a theme, so we're, we're rolling with it. So this idea of living an aesthetic life ties nicely into another important theme in either or, or is how are narratives constructed. So Celine, as she ventures out into wild college life, she's using her own experiences as a way to fictionalize what is happening around her. Wasn't that what a novelist's job was? Transforming real people into fictional characters. In another quote, what if I could use the aesthetic life as an algorithm to solve my two biggest problems, how to live and how to write novels. In any real life situation, I would pretend I was in a novel and then do whatever I would want the person in the novel to do. Afterward, I would write it all down and I would have written a novel without having had to invent a bunch of fake characters and, prevent, and pretend to care about them. What I really think Bottomin is doing is she's asking the question here about narratives. What really makes a novel feel authentic Right after finishing Either Or, I actually started reading uh, Bottomin's nonfiction work, which is really her first published book, but which was published in 2011 titled uh, The Possessed Adventures with Russian Books and the People Who Read Them. And I suspected that some of the things that, that she was going to talk about in The Possessed was going would have an influence on the, the idiot in this book. But I actually... Uh, was really surprised at how much of her own life experience is in The Idiot and in this book. Um, of course, a lot of it is also fictionalized, but there are some key points, like her going to Hungary and her um, being this guy who was a mathematics student who was um, from Hungary. And it, it, it's, it's, some of it is, it's very, it's extremely parallel. Um, it's very, uh, well, what, that, what am I trying to say? It's autobiographical. That's the word. <laughs> but I, again, I was not expecting it to be that heavily influenced, have, have, for it to have that much of an influence on these novels. After reading these books and then going to The Possessed, 
I felt like it was a bit like Inception, you know, which a movie I have still not seen, but I get the premise of. <laughs> Bottoman is writing a narrative influenced by her own experiences while her main character is seeking to write authentically about experiences for the sake of proving that a novel can be heavily based on reality and still not seem overly contrived. So Bottoman is purposely playing around with the traditional way in which narratives are perceived um, by fictionalizing reality in the mundane in a way that is entertaining and straddles some lines. She completely disproves Wilde's theory that narratives, like in the, in the quote from Dorian Green that I had above, can be autobiographical, they can draw from real life without compromising art. And you know, Miss Bottoman, do you boo boo? Cause I'm here for it. If you haven't heard, like, if you haven't watched my idiot review, I am an Elif, Elif. Let me pronounce her name right. Elif Bottoman Stan. I'm at a point where anything that she publishes in novel form, your girl is picking up. I don't even need to read the synopsis anymore. I'm just gonna mine. Remember in um Finding Nemo, the seagulls, mine, 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 mine. That's how I feel with Elif Bottoman. Like she's my home girl, and she but she doesn't know I breathe air, so a little creepy, but. One thing that I did really enjoy about, well, I enjoyed the whole novel, but one thing that I think I probably enjoyed the most in either or was watching Celine grow as a character. I found her cluelessness and her character flaws in The Idiot to be really endearing. Like she, I just really liked being in her head. I, I liked being in her head here. But what grabbed me in The Idiot about Celine and her quirkiness it's still here, but she develops as a character. Where she was more passive in The Idiot, you start to see her become more self-aware and she begins to understand her own identity and she becomes more assertive and she begins to has, have more agency as a character. I silently absorbed the implication that what I felt for Yvonne was only a crush because I didn't have a self I was secure with. But I was like other people in so many ways. In the past, I have been in one country or another because of other people, my parents, Svetlana, Ivan, Sean. But I was in Russia because I looked at the literatures of the world and made a choice. And at this point in the novel, I was like, yes, my girl, yes. I'm actually wrapping this up. This might be one of my shortest reviews ever which is odd, but here we go. Um, I really, so overall, let's let's wrap this up. I really enjoyed either or. I found it to be engaging, funny, inquisitive, um, just, as so, just as much as I did The Idiot. Also, I appreciate that Bottoman spent uh, several pages in this book with Celine musing over the lyrics of the song Killing Me Softly by the Fugees. That features uh, Lauren Hill. Yeah, that's like one of my favorite songs. And so she's she's does she does what many of us do. We get a song and then we sit down and listen to the lyrics and we're like, yo, this song is speaking to me about my life. Yes. And so she's there's several pages in this book paying homage to that <laughs> to that particular song. And I thought it was absolutely brilliant because you know the lyric is um Killing me softly with his words. You know, she's he's reading his her, her words out loud. And so in the previous book, Yvonne and Celine are exchanging these rather ridiculous in some ways emails back and forth. They're quite cryptic and dense and sometimes it's nonsense. And so, but she's thinking like, wow, okay, that that could be embarrassing. You know, she's kind of reflecting and I think that was really, really cleverly done. Also, I just, I really like that book. So not that book. I really like that song. So, I mean, she does what most, you know, slightly emo in their feelings, angsty, early young adults do, right? <laughs> um, and again, Celine makes the choice in this particular book to live aesthetically. And even though I personally didn't agree with some of the things that Celine did or how she went about it, um... I still found it interesting that Celine was quite detached in some ways by some of the behaviors that she was engaging in. It was almost like she was being rather clinical because 
she was participating in these activities in some ways for as a means to an end to understand what am I missing out on but also I'm trying to write a book so maybe these experiences will help me with this narrative that I'm trying to write so in a lot of ways to me at least she came across a bit like a scientist who had an hypothesis and so she was doing some research to disprove or prove her hypothesis and so she so there was still almost like this barrier that I picked up on between Celine and her activities so um, I found that to be very very interesting I really don't think that Celine was fully convinced by Kierkegaard's theory of living the aesthetic life she kind of was like this is I don't know if I really buy into this but because she decided to do this to take on this little project for herself if you will she even though she may not have completely bought into Kierkegaard's theory, it did help her come to terms with some things within herself, some of the things that she was struggling with. And ultimately, which is most important, she she learned more about herself. She Again, she got more agency and she had more identity. Um, and she became more of an active role in her own life instead of a passive character, which... <laughs> Let me wipe this up while I'm at it. Of course, I had to spill the water right at the end of this video, but let's just wrap it up. So, yes, I really enjoy just, I just enjoy this narrative that Bottomen has created around Selene in both Either Or and The Idiot. And so I'm really actually hoping that Bottomman gives us at least two more books of Selene's life. I'm hoping that we get, again, we get 1997 and 1998. So that would encapsulate all of her undergrad years. That's what I'm hoping. But, and Yvonne, I really don't think the question of Yvonne is done. He's, he, he, there's a little bit of Yvonne in this book. I'm not going to say how, but in Either Or, he, he there, he, he's around in some way but that's all I'm gonna say but there are still some questions I'm just not and based on what I've read in the possessed so with Elif Bottomen recounting some of her own personal stories about traveling and stuff like that I'm kind of hoping that Yvonne makes another appearance because I feel like it's not wrapped up yet so anyway that is all for today Clearly we had some, uh, some drama, but that's okay. And I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you for stopping by and taking time out of your day to uh, listen to me chat about books. Have you read The Idiot? And based on how you, I know some people really hate The Idiot, which is with any book. Some people really love it. Some people really hate it. Um, based on um, The Idiot, which are you going to read or pick up either or? And yeah, if you've read either or, I know it's a new release, but if you've read either or, how did you feel about it? Do you want to read it? If you want, please, if you like this video, please feel free to like. If you like my book reviews and the way that I do book reviews, please feel free to subscribe. And all of my links are down below um, to my Instagram and my blog. If you want to see mainly Instagram, my blog runs so behind um, because yeah, it runs behind. But if you want to see me get up to such some, some shenanigans on Instagram, it's all book content for the most part. Um, please feel to follow me there. All my links will be down below. And I'm going to wrap this up because clearly I'm a hot mess. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>